kind of involved, was it? Yes, it is extremely involved. Uh, we've been well on this project into a year, a little more than that. I've been here in March of this year. Uh, started in the industry late 2006 for several different wind companies. Sweetwater, Texas, to Marshall, Minnesota. Uh, bringing crews up to Canada. Uh, I got involved in this project. Uh, I uh, met David Murphy at church. So they brought me out as a, basically a consultant and we started getting the project going, figuring out what it takes. Uh, we went to every local wind farm in this area and got the input. What we're teaching is, is based off of what these industry leaders ask for. So when a, when a student leaves this program, they are equipped, they have experience because we have two towers. We have the one tower that we stood up today with the Moth cells that will be used for training. And then the second one uh, will be 126, 132 feet, somewhere around in there. Yeah. And it will be used for climbing up and down and eventually produce electricity. And it makes the students competitive when they're at this type of training. It does because they've not only got the certificates and the experience, you know, well, the certificates and the knowledge, but they're gaining the experience by actually climbing in a mono tube tower. Uh, we're, we're real similar to what the wind industry is. We're just a little bit smaller scale. Uh, back in the 80s, this was what it was. Uh, our blades are 24 feet on this one. This one's 142 feet. So you can see the way the industry is growing. And that's what we want to do is get guys to leg up. Give them a fighting chance. You know, when they're standing there, it saves the employer money because they've got all the certificates. The employer does not have to pay for things like OSHA 30, first aid CPR, confined space. Uh, we teach two forms of emergency egress. We teach a track tail and a DBI solid roadway. So, you know, arc flash multimeter, things like that, give them a leg up when they're rooting for a job and you got five guys think? trying to get the same one. From, from the video I saw, I looked pretty happy when you uh, figured that this thing was, was good and sturdy. I am. We have we've spent blood, sweat, and tears on this project uh, over a year, and it's a good feeling today to have it sitting up. Good interview, man. Thank good. You. What we have is a mock nacelle with a mock hub on some forms of turbines. It's an internal entrance from inside the nacelle into the hub. On another type of turbine, it's an external entrance. So you would go out a hatch on the top, walk across the top, and go in another hatch that's on the nose cone. What we have on the inside of this is a hatch that's on the inside, two hatches on the top. We have a mock gearbox, a mock main shaft, a mock up generator, obstacles that people will have to get around because that's what they're going to be in the real industry is they're going to have a gearbox in their way if they're trying to rescue somebody. And they're climbing over a gearbox and climbing over a generator just to do the daily work. So we want to make it as real as possible. Tight space? Tight space. Tight, hot in the summer, extremely hot, extremely cold in the winter. And windy all the time? And windy all the time. For the most part, we hope it's windy all the time. You know, but it's not often where you get to go work on a million and a half, two million dollar machine. So it's really rewarding go up there and fix something that's a few million dollars to spend down. Good. Perfect. Hey, Chuck, not just one of these, but what we're seeing in the construction field. Our towers, uh, it's roughly a 20-foot square, 8-foot deep. There's 2 foot of crushed rock in the bottom of this foundation. There's about 8,000 pounds of rebar in this one. So the first foundation, we've got five truckloads of concrete which is about 46 yards. And the second foundation, which is sitting behind the crane, we've got 100 yards of concrete. So they're both about the same width and same depth, but in a megawatt class turbine, you could have anywhere from 34 truckloads of concrete. And uh, I don't honestly know about three bar, but it's a lot more. So, and I can get you some pictures of you to see it. It, it is solid. There's a lot of work that goes into this. Every bolt in this tower and every bolt on every wind farm and every turbine is torqued regularly. So, you know, that's one of the things that we teach. We use a high torque. It is a hydraulic torque device. Uh, you're going to carry one of those daily with you when you're in a wind turbine, wind technician job. Torquing is a main part of the work. Usually you'll have at least two technicians on a crew, sometimes three, it could be up to four, depending on the work that you're doing. A lot of wind farms have a repair crew 
and a maintenance crew. Your repair crew will be your more experienced technicians that will do more electrical high voltage work. And your maintenance crews will be the guys that are doing the day-to-day -day maintenance and service. Uh, it, it's a big machine. It's got a big gearbox. It's got a big generator, big main shaft. Everything needs to be greased regularly, torqued. Uh, there's some filters that have to be changed. You've got hydraulic filters in some turbines. You've got oil filters in others. Oil filters in most of them for the most part. But it's a, it's a daily grind of, one, getting you and your equipment to the top. It's 250 feet for most turbines. Some of them are 300 feet. And even if you're in shape, it's still a workout to get there. Your, your gear that you're wearing weighs 14 pounds. Most people in the industry use DBI Sala XO fit harnesses and a LAD safe system, and that's about 14 pounds. So by the time you get there and catch your breath, then you're torquing, and you know your torque equipment can weigh anywhere from, you know, depending on what size pump you got, but 20, 30 pounds on it. If you're not in shape, you're going to get that away. If you're not in shape, you're going to get that way. If you don't stretch, you're going to be stretched by the first platform. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Good.